how, how, how do you get anything to follow your text as you write it on? It could be anything, but how do you get it to stay at the end of your text as it writes on? So the answer to this is simple, but not straightforward. And the reason I say this is that we are going to have to use a good deal of Fusion. So if you are somebody who is newer to DaVinci Resolve and newer to Fusion, feel free to follow along, but this is not an easy or beginner friendly tutorial. I mean, I'm going to assume that you have some basic understanding of how to use expressions, and nodes within Fusion. If you don't know how to do that, this might not be the video for you, but feel free to try to follow along. So if you're just looking for the quick answer, bang, smack this guy into the X coordinate position of a merge node, transform node, whatever you're trying to track to the end of your text file. Now, what does this mean and how does it work? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and hop into Fusion and explain exactly how this works. But what I am not going to do is I'm not going to explain how to composite the particles at the end of your text. I'm not gonna do that. And I'm not going to explain how to do different kinds of text animation. The only thing I'm going to cover today is exactly this right in here, how to get something to stay to the end of whatever, really anything that you're trying to uh, track. Okay, so let's start from scratch. Now you could either do this in a fusion composition with a text node, or you can do this with a title. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a title and I'm gonna drag in a text plus title, not a text title, text plus. Let's go ahead and smack that guy in there. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and hop into Fusion. You can either uh, just click the magic wand or right click and hit open in Fusion. Now the only difference between me and you if you're working in a Fusion composition is that our node here is a template node. It's not a text node. We're working with a template node and that is gonna become important for the nomenclature. Now the only other thing that we need for the purpose of this tutorial is something to tack on at the end here. So what I'm gonna use are these nice fun glowing sparklies right here. And let me add a key here real quick to get rid of our dark background. Okay, so we've got our text here and we've got our whatever we're trying to tack on to the end. Now I'm gonna hit two with our template node selected here to swap our preview to just seeing the text on screen here. Now, unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to uh, call out where this edge is within the default properties. Okay, I could be wrong here. And if I am wrong, somebody please correct me because I would sure love to know. But the trick is to figure out where this edge is. Well, there is actually a fairly convenient way to do it. It's just, again, not straightforward. There's something in the Fusion page called the domain of definition. And what that is, is an outer boundary that defines where the uh, pixel information is if you will, on screen. And the way we can view it is by right clicking, go to region, and then show DOD or domain of definition, bang. And it might be a little bit hard to see on YouTube, but on my screen, you can see we have this outer rectangle that defines the outer limits of whatever is on screen. Now this isn't only applicable to text. If I were to go over to this little masked out uh, background here and hit two, you can see that I get the outer bounds of anything in the Fusion page. Now it can be a bit funky because if I were to go out to, let's say my keyed out sparkles here, well, the domain of definition is still the entire composition frame. And that's because even though the pixels on screen are transparent, we are still relaying transparency information for the entire domain. Okay, let's go back to our template note here. So the way the domain of definition works here is you can see I have two coordinates in the bottom left corner and the upper right corner. These are the X and Y pixel coordinates for our domain of definition in the current frame. And it works, bottom left corner is zero, zero. Uh, top right corner is whatever the resolution is. So I'm on a 1920 by 1080 canvas. So the trick to get this to work is to access one of these coordinates. And specifically, we need to access this coordinate. And the way to grab that information is with the following expression. It's gonna be whatever node you are calling. So for us, it'll be the template node dot output dot data window. This data window is what's gonna allow us to call one of these coordinates. And the way it works is we will call one number within these brackets going from one to four. One is the bottom left x coordinate two is the bottom left y coordinate three is the top right and four is the top right y coordinate i think i did a pretty good job spelling there so we want the far right x position 
So what we need to do is call the third output. So we need to take this expression and put it into the X coordinate of whatever we're trying to merge on top. Now, if I go to my merge node here, the center position is coupled with X and Y. So we need to split that up into X and Y positions because otherwise we won't be able to enter in our expression for just the X coordinate. So to get there, I'm going to right click, go modify width, and then X, Y path. This creates a path for your center position and it gives you access to the X and Y coordinates. Click that. We can now go over to our modifiers tab. By default, it's kind of like the polygon node where it uh, keyframes the X, Y position. So I'm going to uncheck those. So now to enter in our expression, we just need to hit the equal sign in our expression field here and then go and paste this in. And it is not going to work at first. You'll see we got the number though, right? So we got 1711 here and our domain of definition has 1711 here. Well, what you need to remember is that when we look at X, Y, and Z coordinates, these are normalized based off of the total frame composition. So for example, our Y position isn't on the 0.5 Y pixel, it's half the frame. So what we need to do is divide this number by the pixel width. Now you could hard code this and say 1920, or we could be real smart with this and instead call the resolution of our node. And the way you can do that is if I click on my template node here and I go over to the image tab, you can see that we have our total resolution set up here. And if I hover over this property and I look down in the bottom left, you can see that it says template.width. So it would look something like this. So if I go back to my merge node, go over to the modifiers tab, go back to our expression, and let me go ahead and paste in our new expression. Bang. Now you can see that it locates right on the end here. So if I hit two back on our media out node, now our uh, sparkles stick to the end. And no matter how big our text node is, it is going to follow it from beginning to end. Now, a question you might have is, well, what if I don't want it to be like right there? Like, what if I want it to be a little to the left or to the right? Well, what you could do is just add in a transform node here and move this left and right. That's always an option. Or if you wanted to be real sneaky and be real precise with it, the other thing that you can do is you could add a slider control that determines how far to the left and right it sits. And what I mean by that is that we can actually add a new control that controls the tolerance, if you will, of where this sits. So with my merge node selected, I'm on the modifiers tab. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click in this upper heading here and go to edit controls. This brings up the controls menu and what it's gonna allow us to do is add custom controls to this page here. And so if I were to actually go to this dropdown menu, you can see that I can access the controls that are on this modifiers tab. So we have XYZ center, blah, 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 blah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure on the page section, I'm on the controls page. You could leave it as user or common, but controls will leave it on the controls page. User will generate a new page. And then we're gonna create a new number control and I'm gonna name ours tolerance. You can name it offset, you can name it uh, tall, you can name it chicken sandwich, it really does not matter. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, change the range to be between negative one and one. And I would like this to be a slider control. I guess you could also do screw, but I, I don't know, I kinda like a uh, slider. Then we hit okay and bang. We have a new control set up right here on the bottom. Now at first it's not gonna do anything, but that's because our X expression does not see our tolerance here. So if I were to go to either, I guess you could actually just do this at the beginning. I was gonna say you could tack it on to the end, but we could just type in tolerance plus that. And now we have a slider to move it to the left and right. And just like we had before, if I were to go to the template, and drag our right on to the end, it is still gonna follow the total length of our text. Now this was a question originally asked by the one and only Mango here in our editing Discord. So if you guys do have more questions, swing by. Come join the Discord. And I also stream on good old twitch.tv uh, where I do some editing things live. But I hope this helps you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.